Hello and happy International Women's Day everyone. Now with the day just around the corner, we at Classroom Medics have decided to profile some of the most prominent women scientists in history, some of whom were celebrated in their time, all of whom struggled with discrimination based on their gender. We start with the remarkable Mae Jameson. As a child, Jameson spent a lot of time reading about all aspects of science and had a particular interest in astronomy. She excelled in school and went on to study postgraduate medicine at the Ivy League University Cornell after already obtaining a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering. Dr. Jameson worked as a GP for two years before joining the Peace Corps where she was medical officer for Sierra Leone. When she returned to the States, Jameson swapped her scrubs for a spacesuit when she applied for the US space program. When her training was complete, she went into orbit on the Space Shuttle Endeavour, becoming the first African American woman to go into space. She left NASA the following year to set up her own research company, the Jameson Group. In addition to her medical and chemical engineering degrees, she holds nine honorary doctorates in science, engineering, letters and humanities. Lisa Meitner, an Austrian of Jewish descent, was an extraordinarily talented physicist. She went to Berlin in 1907 to study with Max Planck, famous in the world of physics for originating quantum theory and for also having a number named after him, and Arthur Hahn, a pioneer in the field of radioactivity. Meitner and Hahn worked together for the next 30 years, where they made numerous discoveries together, including the element protactinium. Meitner discovered the radiationless transition called the Auger effect, which controversially was named for a French scientist who made the discovery two years later. As the Second World War was looming, and fearing for her safety, she fled Germany in 1938, taking refuge in Sweden. She continued her work at Manny Siegbarns Institute in Stockholm, but received little support due to Siegbarns' prejudice against women in science. In 1939, she met secretly with Otto Hahn in Copenhagen to plan another round of experiments, which Hahn carried out in his laboratory in Berlin. They continued to communicate secretly via letters, and Hahn published the findings from the experiments the following year. Meitner authored a paper detailing the explanation for the findings of the experiments and coined the term nuclear fission. In 1944, Hahn was awarded the Nobel Prize, but Meitner, who had done much of the work herself, was snubbed, in part because Hahn had played down her role in the discoveries. The manner in which Meitner was overlooked is often referred to as the Nobel mistake. Shen Chung Wu was born in the Jiangsu province of China in 1912, in a time and place where girls didn't go to school. Her parents wanted her to get an education, and so packed her off to the Suzu school, which trained people as teachers. Her aptitude for science led her on to university, and after graduating, she became a researcher at the Institute of Physics at the Academia Silesia, before emigrating to the United States in 1936. She worked at a few universities on the East Coast, including brief stints at Smith College, Princeton, and the University of New Jersey. She settled at Columbia University in New York City in 1944 and remained there for over 35 years. Whilst there, she worked on the Manhattan Project, became one of the world leaders in beta decay, and provided the experimental protocol for scientists Sung Dao Li and Chen Ning Yang to disprove the law of parity. The discovery was hugely significant in the world of physics, and Li and Yang received the Nobel Prize for their work, but Wu wasn't recognised by the Nobel Committee. Now, where have we heard that before? Who helped in the development of improved Geiger counters for measuring radioactivity, and her book Beta Decay is still used by nuclear physicists to this day, despite being published 50 years ago. Born in Manhattan to a medical family, Jane C. Wright was always destined for the healthcare field. She graduated in medicine with honours in 1945 from New York Medical College, and did residences in different New York hospitals, starting in Bellevue and then Harlem, the latter of which she finished as chief resident just three years after graduating. She left to join her father at the Harlem Hospital Cancer Research Center and succeeded him as director after his death in 1952. In 1955, she became Associate Professor of Surgical Research and Director of Cancer Treatments at New York University Bellevue Medical Center. Here, she studied the effects of drugs on tumors and identified methotrexate, one of the first chemotherapy drugs. She was successful in identifying treatments for breast cancer and skin cancer and she developed a chemotherapy protocol that prolonged the life expectancy of skin cancer patients by as much as 10 years. She published over 75 papers on chemotherapeutics and her work has saved millions of lives around the world. In 1967, she was appointed Associate Dean of Cancer Chemotherapy at New York Medical College and became President of the New York Cancer Society four years later. As well as rising the ranks and raising her profile as the world's leading expert on cancer, she led delegations of oncologists to China, the Soviet Union, Ghana, and other places all around the world. She retired from her extraordinary career in 1985, a career in which she overcame both gender and racial bias to succeed in a field that was almost exclusively white and male. Rosalind Franklin was born in Notting Hill in 1906.
1920 to a prosperous and influential Jewish family. She excelled in school from a very early age, and her aunt described her as frighteningly clever. She went to St. Paul's Girls' School from age 11 and excelled in Latin and science. She studied chemistry at Cambridge and after graduating became a research associate there, although without any resounding success. She worked at the British Coal Utilisation Research Association and then moved to Paris to work with the CNRS, a network of laboratories supported by the French government. It was there that she learned a technique called X-ray crystallography. In 1950, she moved back to England, getting a research job at King's College London. At the time, one of the most sought-after findings in science was the structure of DNA, and many scientists, including the now-famed Crick and Watson, were searching for it to no avail. As an experienced X-ray crystallographer, Franklin applied the technique she'd learned in Paris to DNA, studying its structure with a PhD student named Raymond Gosling. She refined the techniques of pioneers before her, which often offended them as her techniques proved much more fruitful than theirs had ever been. She and Gosling used X-ray crystallography to produce pictures of DNA, pictures which suggested that DNA was helical in shape, which was contrary to thinking at the time. Perhaps a little naively, Gosling showed these pictures to Crick and Watson, who began work on a model of DNA based on their data. On the 6th of March 1953, three manuscripts explaining her findings arrived at the scientific journal Acta Crystallographica. A day later, Crick and Watson finished their model of DNA, which they published two months later in Nature to worldwide acclaim. Franklin left King's College the same year, but continued her studies into DNA for a little while longer, before switching to study the structure of viruses. She was diagnosed with cancer in 1956, but continued her laboratory work despite her illness. She died in 1958, and her exposure to x-rays has been cited as a possible factor in her illness. In 1962, Crick and Watson received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, though the debate rages on to this day regarding who should receive credit for the discovery. Though I've only mentioned five, there are so many others who could have made this list. To Mae Jameson, Shen Chung Wu, Lisa Meitner, Rosalind Franklin, Jane C. Wright, and the countless other unnamed and uncredited women of science, we say thank you for your sacrifice and for your contribution to humanity.